Hey there, and welcome to BridgeText.com's tutorial on how to do a proportions test in R. Now, what is a proportions test? Well, there's a couple of assumptions I can talk about that might help you. So the first thing that we're going to do is think about a comparison. Normally, if you're familiar with the terminology, you know that in a t-test, we are comparing two means of a continuously distributed variable. Now, what does that mean? Could be height, could be weight, could be income. Let's say we're looking at Denver and New York, and we want to know, uh, do people in New York make more money than people in Denver? That's a two-sample t-test right there. And why is it a t-test? It's because the variable of interest, which is income, is continuously distributed. But what if we're interested in two samples that are proportions, right? So we're not looking at continuously distributed variables. Now we're looking at proportions. Let's motivate that. Let's say that you go to a city and you ask um, 310 people if they're definitely interested in buying a product. Let's call that product A. And then you go to another city. You ask another 299 people over there, are they interested in product B? And so for each of these questions in the survey, you get some proportion, right? You get some percentage of people saying, yes, I want A. You get some percentage saying, yes, I want B. Now, because that's a proportion, you're going to compare that using something called a proportions test, right? So not a t-test if you're familiar with that, but a proportions test. Now, in order to do that in R, the first thing to do is just copy in some code, which I'm going to do for you here in a minute, and then we're just going to talk through it, and then you'll understand how it works. And these numbers are familiar because I just mentioned them. So let's say here that we had 310 people, right, and we said we asked them about product A. Then the first number in this column over here is going to be the people who said yes, right? So we said 120, 112 people said yes to A. And then we approached 299 people for B, and 86 said yes to B. This line here of code, that's your syntax. That's what you need to type into R. And over here, you can just go ahead and insert your own values, right? So here's sort of your sample sizes for the two samples that you're interested in. And remember to keep the sequence. And then over here is the number of people who sort of said yes, right? That's the positive case in, in, in each instance. And this could really, when you're talking about proportions, it's anything that's representable as a proportion. So here I've just said it's the percentage of people who are interested in buying a product, but it could be people who are, you know, who want to vote for a certain candidate. So anything that can be represented that way, let's push enter. And we get our results here. So notice that R calculates the proportions for us pretty neatly. It tells us that 112 over 310 is about 36%, and then 86 over 299, that's about 29%. So because we're doing statistics, we don't just want to know these percentages, which we could do with Excel or a calculator. What we want to know is, is there a statistically significant difference between these percentages or proportions? And what this number here tells us is no, because ordinarily we want a p-value below 0.05, in order to reach the conclusion that there is a difference between proportions, right? But notice something interesting here. What if we were no longer interested in, hey, is the proportion of A different from B? What if we changed our hypothesis and said, is the proportion of people interested in A greater than the proportion of people interested in B? Now in R, you could just capture that by typing alternative equals greater here. And I'm going to highlight that for you. Hopefully you can see that and just copy it on your own or grab that from bridgetax.com. And now I want you to notice something really interesting. Well, interesting for, for people like me. The p-value just went down. It went down by half, actually. So whereas we had 0 0.06379 here, we now have 0 0.06379. 0319, and guess what? That's statistically significant. So if you change the nature of your hypothesis from a two-tailed hypothesis, which would be, hey, is there a difference between A and B, to a one-tailed hypothesis, which is, hey, is A greater than B, then when you're moving to that one-tailed hypothesis, the p-value drops because normally we cut it in half. So 
Uh, I also picked these numbers because I think they teach you something important about statistics. Um, if we had set up these hypotheses a different way, we would get a different result. If we started off by saying, is there a difference between A and B? Our answer would be no. It wouldn't be statistically significant. But if we said, is A greater than B? Then the answer is yes. So that's really something important to know um, in the theory of statistics.